Today I'm going to be doing a review on the Thermal Pro Temp Spike. I'm going to be putting it head to head with the Meter Plus. So let's get right into it and see which one comes out on top. So I received the Temp Spike from Thermo Pro and my first impressions of this thing from opening the box was how sleek the design was and it felt extremely solid and very durable. I really like how it has a cover on it because this will protect the probe and keep it clean when you store the thermometer. Unlike the Meter Plus which does not have a cover but it does have a very cool bamboo charging base that aesthetically is very nice. Now the next thing I noticed about the Temp Spike is it does not require batteries. Now the Meter Plus runs off of one AAA battery and the temp spike has a rechargeable battery that uses a USB-C style charger which comes with the temp spike. So once you charge the base of the temp spike that acts as a charger for your temperature probe just as the meter plus does. Now according to Thermo Pro the charging base which doubles as a signal booster can last up to three months on a charge and the probe can last up to 36 hours. That is pretty good if true. Now as for the probe, it is very similar to the Meter Plus. It has two sensors, one in the tip for your internal meat temperature and one on the end for your ambient temperature. Now the probes both look very similar. The only difference here on the Meter Plus on that ambient temp side it's a lot smaller of a sensor. On the Meter Plus, they say the dual temp sensors can monitor internal meat temperature up to 212 degrees and ambient temperature up to 527 degrees. On the temp spike, they say the internal meat temperature can range between 14 and 212 degrees and their ambient temp sensor can range from 14 to 572 degrees Fahrenheit. Now I've had a meter plus for a while and it was really the first truly wireless meat thermometer that came out on the market. It's been really good for me but my biggest issue has always been the range that it has. Meter states that the range on their wireless temperature thermometer is 165 feet. I do not find this to be true. I'm sure 165 feet range is under ideal circumstances where the signal is not blocked at all. But with the Meter Plus, there is a way around this where you will stay connected anywhere you have internet. And I'll show you how to do this later. Now with the temp spike, I was surprised to see that they are saying that their thermometer has a range of 500 feet. That is much further than the Meter Plus and a very long distance. So I'm excited to put it to the test and see how true this is. Now both these thermometers have more features that I will go over later as well as the apps that they use to function. But first, we're gonna need a piece of meat to test these thermometers on and I got the perfect thing. A beautiful prime rib roast. Now give me any excuse to smoke a prime rib, I'm gonna take it. Make sure you guys keep an eye out for these during the holidays, cause you can get super deals on them. I stocked up, I probably got about three or four of these in my freezer. I even have a nice four bone rib roast that I plan on doing a 35 to 45 day dry age on. So be sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on that video. But this is a two bone rib roast, black Angus, choice grade. Let's go ahead, get this prepped for the smoker. All right, so I'm gonna go over this real quick just because this is about the thermometers. Now what I like to do on a prime rib roast is separate these bones right here. So to do that, just slice right on top and then kind of turn in where the bones aren't and then around the bones and then just kind of repeat this process to you work these bones off. All right, so that's what you are looking for. You wanna split the bones almost all the way off. Don't cut them fully off, leave them attached a little bit. This will just make it easier for you later. Now all that's left to do is just get your favorite seasoning and liberally season this prime rib. Make sure to get in between where you just cut those bones. A big piece of meat so this can take a lot of seasoning. For seasoning today, I'm using an SPG blend that I made. If you wanna see that, I have a seasoning video. I'll put the link to that up above. And there we go, fully covered in our seasoning. All we gotta do now is just tie this thing up. So get some butcher string, lay it down. Just go ahead, tie this thing nice and tight. Tight. 
Today to smoke this, I'm gonna be using my reverse flow offset smoker. And when smoking a prime rib, you really only have two options. The first one is a reverse sear where you throw this on the smoker, you get it about five to 10 degrees below your desired temperature. Pull it off, you let it rest for a little bit, then you give it a nice sear to get a good crust on there and it's ready to serve. Now the other option, which is what I am doing today, is to take it like it is now, sear it first, then pull it off, put it on the smoker, and let it finish cooking to your desired temperature. So I've already started my smoker, and I'm gonna be searing this right over the coals in the firebox. So let's get out, get this thing seared. All right, let's open this firebox up. See, we got some nice coals here. I'm just gonna break these down. Then all I wanna do is, I just wanna lay down a couple bricks, just like that. Then we can get a grill grate right over our Nice hot coals there. Let that heat up a little bit. All right, this thing's ready to go. So let's get this prime rib seared. Now, as you can see, I haven't added the probes in there yet. That's because on these wireless temperature thermometers, they say do not put them in when you're doing a direct sear. So I've left them out and I will put them in once the sear is finished. It's getting a beautiful sear though. Check it out. That is looking good. It is smelling fantastic, I'll tell you that much. So I'm just gonna let this go a few minutes, keep an eye on it, then we'll get it flipped over, see the other side. Oh yeah, check that out. Beautiful sear. Let's just give it a twist. Let it sear a little longer. I think that's gonna be good. Let's take a look. Beautiful, nice sear. Now let's get the other side. Yep, check that out, give that a spin. All right, I think that is good, let's take a look. Oh, beautiful, just check that out. All right, now we're gonna try and get this bottom side, and like I said, you just gotta be careful for that string. So I don't want to go too long. Kind of just rock it back and forth. You want to get a nice sear on the fat, very important. See all the smoke we're getting now, all that fat's rendering out. Then you're gonna get your flare-ups. Let's get this off here for a second. Just look at that, huh? Ooh, that is how you sear some fat. So we just gotta get this last part here. Shouldn't take long at all. And check that thing out. Absolutely beautiful. We gotta get this off though. All right, now we can get the prime rib on the smoker. Let's go ahead and lay this down. Right about there is pretty good. Check out that beautiful prime rib. Here I have my meter probe and this has a mark on it. You want to get it at least to there and you don't want to go too deep because sometimes it'll cause connectivity issues. So we want it right about there. So go ahead, get that inserted. And then same thing with this, it has a line for how far you want to go. So I'll stick this right next to that so we can kind of get a comparison between the two. Now we'll get this closed up, let this smoke, and I will be leaving both of the bases right here next to the smoker. These can't be too far away or they will lose connection with the probes. So that's that. Let's get inside and check out the apps. I'm gonna be running my smoker around 225 to 250 degrees. I want a really nice low and slow cook for this prime rib roast. Now before I went and put those probes in the steak out there, I did set up and connect both my probes. As you can see over here, pretty simple to do, pretty automatic. I've already used the meter a bunch of times so it immediately connects. And now with both of these thermometers, I have been losing my connectivity with the Bluetooth. I expected this from the meter because I know around this range area, it will cut in and out depending where I am with my phone. But the temp spike seems to be doing the exact same thing in the exact same location. So for range, I think these are both exactly the same. But now let's get into these apps and check them out. 
amount. So let's start with the meter here. You can see it is going to give you your internal and ambient temperatures right on the screen, but I have no cook set up at the moment. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that. Then we want beef and they give you a bunch of options here, which is kind of nice if you are tracking all your different cooks to see exactly what kind of steaks you're cooking. But today we want a roast and I want a rib roast. And then it gives you a recommended temperature of 135 degrees, which would be okay. Maybe a little high, depending on what you like in your prime rib roast. I'm gonna go ahead and bring this down to about 128 degrees. This is also gonna give me a pre-alarm before I get to 128 degrees, so I'm not too worried about it. Then go ahead, click start cook, and there we go. Then it's gonna give you your estimated cooking time. Eventually, a lot of times it doesn't show up immediately and it takes a while to get you an estimated cooking time. All right, so if you go ahead and click estimating cooking time, it'll switch and show you your elapsed cooking time. So down at the bottom below, the bell you can see a little graph if you click that it's just going to keep a track of your temperatures as they go pretty interesting let's go ahead and check the temp spike app if you open it up you can see the device is already connected it's telling me my internal and ambient temperature so go ahead and click that and here we have your internal temperature and your ambient temperature. So we're at 59 degrees internal on the temperature and 276 on your ambient compared to the meter, which is 68 and 283. So we have a pretty big discrepancy already between temperatures. It's about a 10 degree internal difference. Those probes are pretty close, so I don't think it should be that much of a difference, but we'll see later when we check it with our instant read thermometer. Same thing with the ambient. It's pretty close, so I'm not too concerned about that. Let's check out this app. We'll set it up, click beef. That's what we want beef so they don't give you different cuts of beef just choose beef fish whatever let's check beef now here it gives you 125 140 150 159 170 to choose from 140 is a little high 125 is just a little bit low so what you can do here is if you cancel and you hit the edit button up at the top right you can go through here and change what your settings are for rare and medium rare. So for me, a medium rare is more around 135, medium 145, medium well would be 155, and well done would be 165. But for this cook, I'm gonna set it the same. So I'm gonna set rare to 128, save that, then click and go to rare, okay, set. And it tells you about that notch, you wanna make sure that it is in all the way, continue, then place the booster at least a foot away to avoid it getting any damage. There we go. Then you can turn your alarms on and off, vibration on and off, graph here, same thing. And then if we want, we can go down here and you can change your low alarm. So say my smoker gets below 190, I would like it to let me know. And I could set a high alarm. So if this thing starts skyrocketing and gets over 300, it'll let me know. And again, I can turn the alarms on and off. A pretty simple estimated time left. It's giving me three hours, 17 minutes. And then if you click the bell, you can set a timer. So say I was doing ribs or something, I could set this for 30 minutes. Then you can go down here and enter a comment like spritz ribs and after 30 minutes i'll get a timer letting me know to spritz the ribs so that's a pretty cool feature i like there and that's pretty much it with the temp spike pretty basic and simple i do like the layout it looks pretty nice but let me go back to the main page to show you a few features go ahead and click the gear up at the top for setting change your temperature units disconnect notice booster alarm these are going to give you notifications when either you lose connection with the base or the base is losing connection with the probe and the other good thing about the temp spike is there's actually a speaker on the base itself so if you're outside at the smoker and one of your alarms goes off that thing will actually start making noise itself so you'll know that's an awesome feature i really like about the temp spike so then here under alarm it gives you different sounds so you can choose different alarm noises and they have a ton of different sounds. They have 298 sounds. So you'll have to go through and see which ones you like. I'm just gonna leave it there as the default. And then a temperature pre-alarm. I want 10 degrees before I hit my temp to go on. So those are the features for the temp spike. Pretty nice. We look at the features on the meter, it's very similar. You can choose your scale. You also can choose style and then sounds. Again, you can change different sounds as well. Not as much, but that's not a big deal. 200 plus sounds is a little crazy. So they give you sounds for ready to rest, cook ready, an alert, and an overcook. So they give you a lot of nice options there. Then here, notify five minutes before the cook ends. You're gonna wanna keep that on as a pre-alarm. And then what I was telling you about losing connection, there is a way around that with the meter. And we can do that right now. Under meter link, 
just make sure you enable that. So if you click into the cook, the three dots at the top, go up there and then under view cook graph, you'll see web link. Go ahead, click that. Now this share cook screen comes up. And what I like to do here is click email. So go ahead, email that link to yourself. Then you can take your phone, which is connected to the meter and keep it within distance where it will stay connected. So just go ahead into your email, open up that link. This link is going to give you a live stream of your cook temperatures that you can monitor anywhere you have internet available. So the best way to do this would be to get a tablet, connect your probes to your tablet, leave the tablet where it'll stay connected, do the meter link, email yourself this link, then you could take your phone out with you wherever you are. You could be out at the store. As long as you have internet connection, open up that link and you'll be able to monitor your cook from anywhere. That is a great option with the meter to get around the range issues that it has. That's pretty much it, guys. I'm gonna let this prime rib roast go till I get to my desired temp. Then we'll take an instant read thermometer out to the smoker and we will check the accuracy of both alarms. So I will see you then. All right, guys, so I got the notification on the meter app that it was five minutes before the cook ended. So I'm out here to check on this prime rib. So if we look in the meter app, you can see it says we have a 125 internal temperature and on the temp spike it's reading 118 so 126 versus 118 let's get our instant read and see which one's closer Ooh. so first things first just check this thing out that is a beautiful crust on there that we got oh i'm excited to give this thing a try i'm hoping it's ready let's check a temp all right maybe we are in a hot zone with that meter probe so i'm going to try and go as close to where that probe is as i can and see what we got for a temp there so it is a little warmer i'm at 122 so that makes a little more sense but on my meter app I'm still reading 127 degrees. I got 122 there. And if you look at the temp spike, we are at 122. So the temp spike is very accurate. So after that conclusion, what I think I'm gonna do is just go by the temp spike internal temperature readings. I'm gonna bring this thing up to 128 degrees. I'm gonna get it pulled off and then I'll see you inside to get it sliced up. The prime rib is finished. I waited till the temp spike was reading an internal temperature of 128 degrees. I went out there and I checked it with an instant read thermometer dead center in the roast and we were at 125 degrees. So I'd say the temp spike is pretty accurate compared to the meter, which was way off. I haven't noticed it being that off before. I don't know, maybe because it's older. I have had the meter for quite some time but you saw the internal temperature readings were much higher than what the actual internal temperature readings were. Then to the connectivity issues that I had, I'm used to this with the meter and I know exactly where that range is for me. And it seemed like the temp spike was exactly the same as the meter. As soon as I lost communication with the temp spike, I lost communication with the meter. So distance wise, I would say both these are about the same. But with the meter, you can use their meter link and monitor your cook from anywhere you have internet access. So that is a great option. I do like the case of the temp spike more. Just because it's not for holding the temperature probe, it has so much more. It has that cover, which is great for if it's raining out. I also like how there's a speaker on the base, so you don't have to have your phone. If you're out at the smoker and you hear it go off, you know that you've reached temperature. I also like how it is a rechargeable case instead of actual batteries. Now this all depends on your preference, if you like a rechargeable case or if you want the batteries. The case for batteries is if you're like me and you always forget to charge up your devices, then you go to use them and they are dead. Then you have to plug them in and wait for them to charge up before you can use them. Whereas with a meter, you can just swap that battery out and you're ready to go. But on the other hand, sometimes you go to swap that battery out and you realize you have no more batteries. So it's really a preference on what you prefer between rechargeable case and a battery case. So there's also a pretty big price difference between these two thermometers. The temp spike you can get on their website for $64. I'll put a link down below if you're interested in that. And for the meter, you're looking at a hundred bucks. And I can put a link down below as well for that. So if you're looking for a thermometer that's a little bit cheaper than the meter, but it does almost everything that the meter does, I think the temp spike is a perfect option. It is a really well-built wireless thermometer that for the price is a very good thermometer. But enough talking about this. Let's slice up this prime rib and see how this thing came out. So with these thermometers, you don't wanna go ahead and just yank them out. Give them a twist to break them free and then just pull it out. So there's our two thermometers out. Let's cut this butcher string off the rib roast. 
This thing has a beautiful crispy bark on it. All right, now the first thing you're gonna wanna do is get those ribs off that we cut almost all the way earlier. See right there. So just come down with your knife and finish the job. Then here, probably the best piece of this prime rib. These are the ribs. This is some of the best meat on here. And all you're gonna wanna do is just cut this right in half. And then you have a beautiful rib. Check that out, super juicy. This is some of the best meat on here. Mm. Super tender, that's absolutely delicious. Let me cut this thing right down the middle and we'll see how this came out. Oh yeah, check it out absolutely dripping with juice. Now I don't know how you like your prime ribs. I'm a medium kind of a guy and this is perfect right here. If you're looking for more of a rare, I'd go ahead and pull this at 120 degrees, but this is perfect for me. So let me just get a slice. Oh yeah, just check that out. That is super tender, absolutely gorgeous. Check out the color on there. Not much of a smoke ring because we did that sear first. All right, so what I wanna do here, grab a piece of this rib cap. Let's just pull that right off. Then I want a nice chunk of that. That is the best piece. There we go. Mm, so good. The bark on there is fantastic. The fat has an amazing smoky flavor. This is a good prime rib roast. But this is about the thermometers and the conclusion is it really depends on what you are looking for to which thermometer you'd like to get. Depending on what features you want and the price point you're looking for will depend which thermometer you choose. But again, I will put a link to both the Thermo Pro Temp Spike down below and the Meter Plus. But I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give it a like. And if you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe right over here. And if you wanna see me compare the Meter Plus with the Meat Stick wireless thermometer, check this video out right here. Most importantly, get out there and smoke something good. Mmm.